Howdy! Building a bathroom from an off-grid cabin on a Harbor Freight trailer? Well, that sounds kind of crazy and also ludicrous, but I've done that. This is George the Fearless Rambler, and I'm doing some off-grid. And if you're interested in that particular story, this is part two framing, and I'm inviting you to come join us. Howdy! Fall's upon us. We have done a lot of work this summer, working on getting the interior done of our shed. And I've been working on a small outside portable bathroom that's on a trailer. So I am building this bathroom and you've seen it before. And last week I got a chance to come up here and I finished the, well not the plumbing, but certainly the drain system that will be able to hook up with an RV hookup down in here or the one down below depends where I end up parking this and again we have a secondary bathroom one in our trailer one maybe out here for the campers that are in tents or maybe those that might be staying in the ooh the shed right here I'm trying to follow the county's covenants saying anything that's uh, under 600 square feet has to be on a trailer. So on a trailer, it is movable. You can plug it in, hook it up, move it, once I get the wheels back on. And what I have here is again, a toilet, a sink, a shower. Yeah, not, uh, not a very big bathroom area, but certainly if you're camping, this would be fun. I don't know about fun, but at least it'd be usable that you don't have to sit there and use a Port a potty or go up in the trees somewhere and do your duties. So today I'm gonna to do some framing. I'm gonna get the framing up. I have to put the siding on first and then I'll hang it. That's gonna be next weekend. And then put the roof on it. That should be done for the summer or in this case, the fall. So great, let's get going with it. It's gonna be fun. Yay! So during the week I was away from my property, I designed up the framing for this project wrote out what I needed to purchase, then headed back to that box store to spend a load full of money. Is this a money pit? Comment below. I want to know. Get those up. Get these to size. I'm ready to do this side and that side over there will have a window. So let's get this all ready and let's go cut it up. I marked up each of the 2x4s based off my design and drawings. Then I cut them to size to match each of the height of each wall. I laid out the studs 16 inches between centers for assembly, you know, nailing them together. And for the doors and windows, I used a double 2x4 header, trimmers, and king studs, and a sill for the window. On this front wall, if you notice on the bottom, I have left the sole plate across the door opening. No worries, I'll trim that later. Here's the back and the left wall. And if you notice during the build, I'll be using a double top plate for the front and the back wall for support and strength. Have you ever, ever got done with a small project and go, oh, this is pretty good. But then you look at it and you know, you've done something wrong. That just happened. And it's not the first time it's ever happened to me. It just happened this time. So right here, after I got done and I put away all my tools and all the boards for the day, I come back and I look at this and I go, this isn't what I drew. Let me explain what I've done here on this window framing. Though I don't believe it will matter that much because this is only 18 between centers. So I think the weight, it will be distributed well. This is what should have happened. This header should be on this board. And then I need another board right across here, all the way down to do that correct. So guess what I'm gonna be doing? I need to rip out this board, recut it, 
trim it right here and here, right to this line, and then add in the support that is needed to do a header correctly. Snap, done. Whoa, that was pretty fast. Now, it took about an hour and a half. Had to get everything out. Then of course, put it all away. But it was gonna bug me. I couldn't let it sit out through the week. Just needed to have it done correctly. I think it is done correctly. As like the tough shed, I use smart board for my walls and my siding. I attached the smart board first before I raised the wall. When I did raise the walls, I checked for level and shin for plumb. My front and back walls are going to be my load bearing walls and once I put that smart board on it, they were extremely heavy to put in place. When I built the bathroom, I also put that smart siding on. They call it something else at Home Depot, but certainly it was easy to put up. Once I got that front and that back wall in, it was time to put the side walls in and tie them together. I found them to be much lighter and so much easier to install. Got those rafters in and now it's time to close in this little box. Starting to get there. Time to put the roof on. And I went ahead and used some OSB roof decking to close it up. Why we started so late during the season, you know, getting started with that framing, was due to the delivery date of our special order outside door. It was a three months waiting period, but it finally came. So why did it take so long to get it? Well, it was an out opposite swinging pre-hung metal outside door. To start that framing of the front wall, we need that measurement from that door jam, you know, the door frame. Once we had that measurement, the framing went quickly and we could hang that door. Now this trailer's are closed for the winter. Now we just need to seal in that door with some insulation, silicon caulking, and of course these really pretty decorative door casings. And as you notice that roof line, we added in some drip edges, soffits, and of course fascia. We couldn't forget to get that window in and put up some 30 year roofing shingles. If you're scared of heights, don't do DIY roofing. While you're roofing, Someone's going to take a picture of you. Say cheese. We sealed in all the cracks and crannies. Then we painted it, you know, to match the color of our bunkhouse. And with that red door, it really brightens it up. What do you guys think? Comment below. So here it is. And this is where the toilet's going to go. The sink. And again, the shower. This right here is for an air vent for the shower. This part right there is for the air vent for the toilet and of course the air vent for the uh, vanity is going to go right there. Now sitting here in the bathroom you can see that I have put some like wire mesh down here for the winter and it's right here. And what that's for is that I don't want little rodents to climb up in here or into the piping for the winter. So I covered that up and again, this I'll be removing to start putting in the vent system in here. As you can see, winter is approaching quickly. And that old saying, it's time to get out of Dodge. What that means is I better get off this mountain quickly before that snow traps us in. It's going to be another season before I have a chance to do the interiors of that bathroom. But in your case, it's just going to be part three of this series. Stay tuned, part threes are coming. You know what? I have a new channel. It's called Fearless Off Grid. And I'm going to be putting a lot of this content over onto that channel. So do me a favor, come meet me over at Fearless Off Grid. I want to thank each one of you today for joining this Fearless Off Grid video presentation of the progress of this utility trailer off-grid bathroom. If you've been enjoying these adventures, do me a favor and become a member of that rambling crew. Also, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a cent. 
Now that notification bell will forewarn you of some great videos coming up. You don't want to miss out. Give me two thumbs up for this is George the Fearless Rambler and waiting to do some more work on this bathroom. Signing off.